Gary Kurtz had a lot to do with that film, and he's with us tonight along with his wife, Meredith. And uh, Gary, you remember, <laughs> Meredith was laughing while that was on. Uh, how long ago was that in your career? That was a long time ago, about 1964, I think, or three. Mm -hmm. Meredith, were you, were you married at that particular time or going together? We were going together. Going, and in spite of that film, <laughs> <laughs> that that I remember that film very well. We shot the whole thing in eight days, and it cost forty-eight thousand dollars. Forty-eight thousand. Wow. And I think you told me a while back when we met that the, the special effects were actually lifted from a Russian film. Was that yes, the one? that that was one of Roger Corman's films, mm -hmm. and what he did a lot of the time when he would buy foreign films the American rights to foreign films, and if they weren't quite right for the American market, then we'd redo them mostly. And in this particular case, the only thing from the Russian film that we used were the space shots. I see. Okay, first of all, congratulations to you and George Lucas and all the people who worked on Star Wars. Seven Academy Awards last Monday night? Yes, we were very pleased. And I think for the last two or three weeks on television, I haven't seen you in anything other than a tuxedo, so it's nice to see you. Yes, it's nice to be back to normal. I would like to, to have had the concession for tuxedos for just the <laughs> Star Wars people. <laughs> What's, uh, with all the excitement of the Academy Awards over now, and uh, Star Wars still knocking them dead in the box office, um, what, what has it done, let's say, to your life, Meredith? What, what did that movie do to, to you and, and your daughters? And I just made it a lot busier. A lot busier. And very exciting. Well, you know, there have been a lot of more festivals and celebrations and things. Mm -hmm. But it's made it possible for us to do the, the concerts that's coming up now. It's brought music to lots of people besides us. That's right. There have been so many uh, spin-offs as a result of Star Wars that uh, I guess uh, every week we show some new product. It started off with T-shirts and belt buckles and what we had Star Wars wallpaper on a couple of weeks ago. What you said originated in, in England. In yes. England. Okay, what can we look for in the next... Uh, well, Kenner has uh, a lot of really nice material coming out next year that we just saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, they have those little figures and the little yes. X-Wing fighters and things. Well, they have uh, a Death Star module and uh, the Millennium Falcon spaceship and a lot more set pieces to put those little figures in. They really look nice. That's, of course, one of the most fun things about making a film like this mm -hmm. is playing well, with the toys. When you and George Lucas first started to work on this and then as you got into it and the movie came out, did you ever realize that the, the whole world would be Star Wars uh, crazy after a, a very short period of time? No, actually we were a little apprehensive as we got toward the end because we had gone a little over budget and spent about a million dollars more than we thought we were going to and were worried that we were going to make our money back. I mean, mm -hmm. We weren't quite sure at what point the film might break through the science fiction audience into the general audience. We knew that had to happen to to do better than right. the $25 million that 2001 How long did, did you th think it would take? Well, I thought it would take a long time. I thought it would take some word of mouth because it's yeah. a very hard film to advertise. Yeah. And actually, uh, it took 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> World's record. Well, the first couple of weeks we knew would be the science fiction real fans right. because they already knew about it. So after two weeks, when the lines were still there, we realized that it had the potential of doing better than we thought. Mm -hmm. Is there any pressure now with the sequel at all that you feel like you have to do something bigger and better? Well, there is a certain amount of pressure, but I didn't want to go that route. They try to, the one-upsmanship way of making a sequel. It's just another adventure, a slightly different story, using all the same characters, but the effects and things are in, off in a different direction. So I think it'll be as interesting, but in its own way, a completely different movie. Mm -hmm. And it, I read somewhere where... Uh, that you and George had hoped that this would be like a James Bond type thing where you could come out every few years with it? Well, before we even started shooting on the first one, we realized that the characters were really interesting. We really liked them. We sort of came to love all the characters in it. And we said it would be great if we could do a series of films that showed, showed the development of the characters and their relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. And of course, that really is based on the economics of the business. If the second film does well enough, then we we're able to make a third one, maybe a fourth one. We'll see how it goes from there. Good. Meredith, you were in, um, I guess, Los Angeles at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, what, eight, nine months ago for the Outer Space concert. Yes. But what happened down there? It was just unbelievable. Oh, the real festival. It was really well received. It was mm -hmm. marvelous. Were there 17, 18,000 people? Yes, right. They did, 18,000 people. And you came back with an idea to bring that to Northern California. We thought we should do it in Northern California. The film yeah. had been made here. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we're talking about it, I want to show a very unusual poster. 
that we can get to in just a minute, where we will see all the, uh, graphically, all the um, uh, selections that are going to be played in uh, Marin County and also uh, Berkeley, and it's coming to San Jose. And tell us a little bit of, uh, about the poster and the artwork, because it's from a very the famous person. The poster was painted by Ralph McQuarrie, who was the conceptual artist for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And he represented the, the music here. We're playing 2001, which is represented with its monolith. Mm -hmm. The Flash Gordon theme from Whistler Preludes. We're playing music from the planets behind Sir Alec Guinness. We're playing music from Close Encounters. Right. We have the, the mothership, mothership there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the horn is there to represent the orchestra. We selected the best musicians up north here to play it. They're playing with, with John Williams, who's mm -hmm. conducting their rehearsals and some of the concerts. Ralph McCoy also worked on the mothership for, for Steve for Close Encounters. He did. Wow. We have a picture of uh, John Williams, uh, not that he needs any introduction. You probably saw him on the Academy Awards recently when he picked up uh, one of his many Oscars. That's Williams on the right talking to Steven Spielberg of Close Encounters. This Williams fellow, uh, everything he touches, uh, let's see, we'll go back to Fiddler on the Roof and the Poseidon Adventure and Star Wars and Close Encounters. Jaws. Jaws. Was Jaws. His, Fiddler on the Roof was his first Academy Award. Mm -hmm. and that was an adapted score from the stage. And then Jaws was his second Academy Award. And I was just watching The Fury recently, and I, I, I said, this music, powerful. And there, John Williams comes mm -hmm. up again. And you John told me he's working on Jaws, too? Yes, John is one of the one of the best of the symphonic composers because his background is in classical music. He's written several symphonies of his own and that have been performed by various mm -hmm. orchestras. Well, Meredith, you're, you're a musical family, they tell me. Not yeah. a film family, but a musical family. What does Williams have? What, what is it that, that excites us so much I, in his music? I think he just has a sense of the resonances in music and how they, how they respond to the, to the middle of people. Mm -hmm. sort of also, they film music is really a, sort of a direct line to the emotional heart of the audience. It's, uh, film is an emotional medium first and an intellectual medium second anyway, and music is, is that direct link. And if it's really well done in the sort of Wagnerian tradition of, of the, music ex um, the music explaining the emotional part, whereas the, the visuals then explain the more intellectual and uh, story part. It works very well, and John is one of the best at that. When, when uh, Star Wars was in the making there, uh, and you brought in John Williams, did, did, does he, he look at the film and come up with something, or wh how did the concept all start? What was it? Usually what happens was we came, went to him before we even started shooting. We wanted mm -hmm. to use him because of his background and what mm -hmm. he had done. But at the time he saw the film, and we discussed various ideas for certain parts, we had some sample classical music that we played for him and said, we like this kind of theme, we like this kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And he was able to take that and, and uh, ad adapt some of that idea into his own original music. He, using, using the Wagnerian tradition, he uh, assigned a theme to each of the characters and interwove them all throughout the movie. Okay. Meredith, we're going to put up some dates here where the concert is coming. It kicks off next week, and John Williams will be appearing at, uh, I believe, at least one. John Williams is conducting the two concerts in Marin. Marin, okay. And he's rehearsing the orchestra for All for right. as well. Let's hear a little of uh, John's uh, theme from Star Wars as we put up the dates here and talk about uh, how you can see John Williams in person and hear uh, some wonderful music. Okay, Sounds of Space, let's see, kicks off a week, uh, let's see, next Friday in San Jose at the Performing Arts Center at 8 o'clock. It's a fantastic uh, building there. And then John will be in Marin Saturday the 15th and okay. Sunday the 16th. That's right, he's conducting his own work. Hugo Rinaldi, our principal conductor, is conducting mm -hmm. the other works. And John will even be rehearsing the other... Yes. Okay, and then we go next Tuesday, 18th. All right. Tuesday the 18th in Berkeley. Now, um, one of them is a benefit. Tell us about that. Well, they're all a benefit, actually. They're all oh, benefits yes. for the Waldorf schools, the Waldorf school here in Marin in particular. Mm -hmm. Our children and several other children related to the people who put this film together attend that school. Okay, and we'll, again, in addition to the selections, will be Laser Mation. Laser Mation, right? Mm -hmm. Was it similar to what they used in, in Los Angeles? It's similar to what they used in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. 
but being a bit more subtle because we're inside a hall. We're in a regular concert theater hall. But they're developing a beautiful program. Army yeah. Productions is designing it. And uh, marvelous people. People from the science fiction world are really coming together to, to put together a really nice mm -hmm. presentation to enhance the music. All right, we could talk all night about Star Wars and all sorts of things, but I want to bring in uh, someone very special to you. And, and Tiffany Kurtz, would you come in, Tiffany? As Princess Leah, and that fell off, but we can see your pretty red hair now. Now, you were actually in the Star Wars movie, right? Mm -hmm. You weren't the princess, so what part did you play? Jawa. Jawa. My goodness, you know, we talked to Anthony Daniels the other day, who was the goat C-3PO. Did you work with Anthony at all? The robots? Mm -hmm. well, you, you were sort of off in those caves. How did they make your eyes look so weird? They were lights. Lights? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you bring that costume with you at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you show us the original Jawa co a costume during the first break in the movie? We'd appreciate that. Okay. Was your sister in the film, too? Mm-hmm. And her name is Melissa, right? And she couldn't be with us this evening. Do you think that, uh, are you available for the sequel at all? Have they contacted you? We're not sure yet whether there's going to be Jawas <laughs> in this one. Oh, that's Maybe right. the third one. Maybe they were wiped out. But you're, you're sort of playing hard to get, I imagine. <laughs> that's, that's the way they do it, they tell me. Well, listen, you run along and uh, get into your Jawa costume, and we'll get into tonight's movie. We'll put you on the first break because a lot of people are going to tune out to this film tonight. It's not that good, okay? Thank you for being with us, okay? All right, we'll uh, post those dates again, too, on the uh, concert during that first break, and we thank you very much. And again, uh, we're all looking forward to the concert and, of course, the uh, future Star Wars films. And I guess Star Wars is very close to people in the Bay Area because so many folks in the Bay Area worked on the film. Yes, well, we all live here, and, and most of the pre- and post-production was done in Marin County. Good. Keep it that way, because it's too smoggy down there, <laughs> down yeah. south. All righty. Let's get into uh, tonight's movie. And remember, stick with it a little bit, because um, Gary Kurtz made that movie a long time ago. And who knows, you might spot some talent in tonight's movie, OK? Believe me, you're going to think I'm blind. Rocks, but... Joe? Towers of rock crashing down and then growing up again? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps a part of the process is the absorption of silica, taking it right out of whatever it comes into contact with, like human beings. Just like Ben. Bodies are turned to stone. What was this amazing power that could turn people into stone? That could suddenly turn inanimate rocks, stones, monoliths into growing, spreading, expanding monsters, threatening to engulf whole towns and cities, to bury all civilization under an immensity of weight beyond all calculation? The natural slope of the valley floor is bringing them right down here. And once they break through to the other side of the mountains, there'll be no stopping them ever. Look, all we're asking you to do is save her life. I can't cope with something I don't even understand. Ready! Hit it, now! Okay, on our stage, this, this is an exclusive, the Jawa, this is the original costume that was used in Star Wars, and inside this costume, of course, is Tiffany Kurtz, and can you show us the eyes there? Look right at that camera there, wow. Now, I know you can't talk with this on, but these characters were very short, and they collected scrap, and they didn't do very much on, on the desert there. I think it was a George Lucas idea. 
You shake your head yes or no. It was on the desert. It must have been very warm in that outfit, was it? Okay. Now, we don't know whether the Jawa is going to be in the sequel, do we? But you're willing, are you willing to play it, play it again, get in that costume? Was your sister a Jawa, too? Oh, my God. A two Jawa family. <laughs> the American way. Okay. Thanks for being with us. I know that's warm inside. So, thanks for being with us, okay? Boy, wouldn't Captain Cosmic and Tutti Too like to see that? All right. Let's get back to tonight's movie. Bye-bye. We'll give you those addresses uh, again where the uh, Sounds of Space concert's going to be during the next break. Okay, in case you tuned in late, well, here are some dates for uh, outer space concert music that you can hear uh, starting next Friday. And John Williams, the great uh, conductor, will be leading the uh, orchestra on two of those occasions. Let's look at the dates now, and I'll tell you all the details. Tickets, are, by the way, are, tickets are available to all bass agencies, all, all ticket outlets. San Jose, we're going to have uh, the Sounds of Space next Friday night at 8 o'clock in the evening at the Performing Arts Center. And then Saturday and Sunday in Marin at the Civic Center, John Williams will conduct the orchestra and you'll hear Star Wars and theme from Flash Gordon and Close Encounters and 2001 and then Tuesday in Berkeley. There we go. A little Close Encounters music. That'll be along Tuesday in Berkeley at the community center there at 8 o'clock. So, um, Support the outer space concert in your neighborhood. And again, we want to thank, thank Gary and Meredith and uh, Tiffany Kurtz for spending some time with us this evening. And we needed all the help we could get with tonight's movie, right?